right, guys. Well, this is a um, presentation that uh, is for my rank one class. Um, it's, uh, this is uh, a presentation called um, Literacy in the Arts. Um, Anyway, literacy in the arts. I, I've done many things with literacy in the arts in my classroom. Um, but an overview here real quick. This project is for the culminating project in my ED705 class, School Transformation at Campbellsville, uh, to earn my rank one MASI master's degree in school improvement. Um, what can you do with that? Um, I think you can be a instructional assistant, instructional coach, instructional assistant, instructional coach, um, <clears throat> move up through it within the district with that. Um, I like my job. I like being an art teacher. Um, but to be a rank one, yeah, that's uh, definitely a goal of mine. Um, so two classes left, two classes left after this one. Uh, this project was originally meant to be a professional development opportunity for students uh, where students teach students in a pilot program. Uh, really, we changed that because um, COVID's going on and, you know, kids can be so close to kids. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a possibility that I would like to evolve that as we get out of COVID, hopefully. <laughs> so, um, um, but, uh, I'm willing to step out on that limb to make that happen. Um, so I'll discuss the importance of literacy and my why reasoning, why I integrate uh, literacy within my art classes. Um, I will discuss, um, uh, so yeah, my why I've got, uh, um, let's see. So, um, my why and why I integrate literacy within my art classes. Um, I'm also going to discuss, um, how I've been able to incorporate literacy within my art classes within the last five years here at Collins, um, with projects that connects, uh, my students with others beyond the walls of our school. Um, and then, um, we'll talk about ways to integrate, um, you know, literacy within your own classes and, and, uh, you know, specific ways and, and, um, hopefully we can get to that. Um, so literacy is the ability to read and write. If those didn't know that the ability to read and write, uh, I love this quote. Um, I'm always doing that, which I cannot do in order, uh, that I may learn how to do it. Pablo Picasso, um, quotes are definitely thing that I, um, that, drives me and motivates me and I keep a tab open and I, I uh, constantly look at quotes every day and it's just an inspirational thing for me. Um, but uh, there's a video here about literacy. Um, so this is a, uh, we'll talk about this, this when this uh, gets through, if it opens. <laughs> <clears throat>
love that. I love that the power of literacy and you know what it can do and the that read the read some book and it was moving for me. Moving for me. Um, being raised by my grandpa and um, um, yeah, that was that was definitely moving for me. Um, so back to this. Um, yeah, guys, I appreciate your patience. This Chromebook is not as, not as um, um, uh, forgiving as the MacBook. Uh, no matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. Love that movie. Think about this. How do you teach literacy in your classroom? Do you integrate it within other projects and units? If not, why not? So something to kind of think about as, you know, we continue on with this. Um, you know, why not? Why, don't, why do you not include it in your projects? Um, here's my why. When I was in elementary school, grades one through six, I struggled with reading and writing and was always in the reading group with strugglers. The yellow birds. Um, red birds were the best readers. Then the blue, then black, then orange, then yellow. Uh, my handwriting was not legible with cursive, just with print. In junior high, grades seven and eight, my English teacher, Mr. Thompson, um, would read us uh, books like The Pearl by John Steinbeck. Even though I was not a good reader, my imagination carried me to other worlds. Um, in high school, my art teacher, Ms. Heisey, she taught us calligraphy with pen and ink, increasing my focus and improving my writing. I incorporate literacy within my classroom because of how much it improved my life. I incorporate literacy within my classroom to inspire my students just as I was inspired. Um, so here are some projects that I have done um, in the past that I carry over um, year after year. Um, so this first project is little and someone keeps calling you. Um, the first project is um, um, Blackout Poetry. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I'm going to kind of explain it right here. Um, go. Some students, if they're going to discuss their uh, R2 project, where they had to take a uh, author, find a quote, uh, analyze their quote, and try to uh, figure out the meaning of it into a drawing. Um, I chose my quote. Um, and drew this because it it reminded me of the game um, Zelda, and the reason like the part that it says the mask, um, I chose the mask of truth from Majora's Mask because it says the truth that. Just real quick, um, interpretation. So these kids, they have to interpret it in their own way in a drawing. And, you know, it, it, this takes me back to my why. Um, you know, how? what can I do to carry that literacy over in the classroom? And, you know, not just in their content classes, but in, in my class as well. Um, how can I get them to understand um, certain meanings and certain, certain ways of doing things in another way with art? Now, how can I do that? Oh, no. So my quote was, oh, the love will be happier for Bella and generous. And I just thought that the earth shaped like a heart would be something that probably like symbolize that the best. So that's my quote. Great. I chose the Shakespeare quote. And I was drawing old pictures of myself that I have on my phone. Um, to show like who I am, what I am, who I have been. What's the good name of the quote? Um, uh, we know, we know what we are, not what we are, who we may become. Cool. I um, love this one. Really? I try yes. not. I try not. Well, I chose the Shakespeare quote. Nat okay. Uh We know what we are, but we know what we may be. And that's a pretty spooky quote. But um, pretty much what I drew was a representation of what he, this degenerate scum, <laughs> may, oh think, my gosh. may think he is <laughs> as handsome as even the most handsome of Squidward's. But really, all he is is probably just a brony that lives in his mom's basement. Oh okay. my gosh. Okay, so I chose the Lumen Ball Club, which is Gertie Club's Curiosity Stone. So I drew a door. Okay. And the door represents 
um, everybody's curiosity to see what's behind. Okay. And then what is behind the problem, your ideas, and the creative flow. Okay, guys. Uh, um, yeah, just uh, different ways of, um, you know, iterating other subjects within our classes. And, um, you know, think about how you could do some integration of literacy within your classroom. Um, Chromebook, slow. So, uh, Uh, this project we started in 2018. Um, my R2 students and I collaborated with the school librarian. Some of you guys have seen this, um, those that have been here. Um, we uh, collaborated with Mrs. Jones. We fundraised, uh, Mrs. Jones was a librarian, fundraised and purchased four little free libraries. Uh, we built, designed, painted over two months of work, uh, then installed them with the assistance of SC SCPS maintenance um, at four underserved areas in Shelby County. Uh, four of the smaller towns, uh, less known towns. Um, we had a dedication ceremony and filled each um, little library with books. Um, in Simpsonville, what we did was is uh, the, the mayor and the sheriff and uh, dignitaries, they came out and uh, they um, um, were at the dedication with us. And um, it was great. It was, uh, you know, definitely one of those things like how can we contribute back to our community and not just within our school. This is in Baghdad where this is at. If you have not been there, small little town, um, a great hometown feel, Baghdad. Kind of reminds me of my hometown where I grew up in Ohio. Um, everybody knows everybody and you don't, you don't need to lock your doors. It's one of those kind of towns. But we, uh, so we had one in Baghdad, one in um, Southville. Um, uh, there's a grocery store there, and we had one in, um, we had one in, uh, let's see, Simpsonville at the Kentucky Farm Bureau, and then we had another one at uh, the FAC. They're still there, going strong, and. Um, you know, the best thing about little free libraries is um, the people refill those. The people, you know, they uh, they take books, they take a book, they put a book back. And I believe one of them is being used for food now. So um, either way, it's a it's a win win. Whatever has happened. Um, the next project here is National Handwriting Day. Um, 2021 will be the fourth consecutive year that I will be taking 20 of the best writers of calligraphy from my art classes to teach elementary students around SCPS the awesomeness of handwriting. Um, you know, that's another one of my ways um, that I learned in high school and um, carried over here. Um, but, uh, you know, the kids that I that I have are art one students, students that we, you know, learn and develop in the classroom. And um, um, this video is kind of like, uh, um, this was one of my social media posts that I put out there. Um, I'm a part of many groups on social media with art teachers around the world. And uh, we talk about things and discuss things and uh, bounce ideas off each other. And uh, I know a lot of you aren't into that. I am. And, you know, that's kind of how I'm able to, you know, um, um, uh, come up with some great ideas and, you know, throw some I ideas out there. And, um, hey, all, it's Mr. Steve. Uh, January 23rd is National Handwriting Day. So I put that out 
there to you guys too. I challenge you. What can you do in your classes with handwriting day? What could you do with handwriting day in music? What could you do in handwriting day in media? Um, you know, what could you do with that? Um, so, you know, that's the challenge I throw out there to you. And, um, you know, COVID going on and, you know, we can't do things the same way that we had before, you know, what, uh, um, you know, how can we differentiate to do the things that, how can I differentiate to do the things that I've been doing? Um, but more importantly, how can you differentiate to in, integrate literacy within your own classroom? I love these quotes. It is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. Albert Einstein. The task of the modern educator is not to cut down jungles, but to irrigate deserts. C.S. Lewis. So um, with all this literacy, literacy, hugely important, hugely important, not just in the contents, but in us. Because, you know, we we inspire a different type of, of outlet for students. We inspire ways for students to, you know, get into a different area as far as their understanding to go into their imagination um, no matter what area that we teach so how can you integrate literacy what can you do what are some ideas um, so hopefully um, um, as I get into my calligraphy and more of my uh, more of my literacy projects as the years goes along um, hopefully uh, um, you guys will be inspired as well. And if you want to collaborate on something, let's do it. I'm, I'm excited to do that. Um, it changed my life, literacy in high school, even though I teach art. But I tell you what, it's um, it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. So, um, so guys, that's it. That's what I've got. Um, I appreciate the uh, time. I know we went past time. But um, um, this, uh, not just this project, but this overall theme um you know hopefully you can get the wheels spinning a little bit with with uh, literacy and um you know ways that you can incorporate that within your classroom um so let me try to get back to my screen here chromebook is fantastic let me tell you so 